Welcome back, everybody. It is Black Diamond Mortgage with our mortgage education series. And our objective is to make you more knowledgeable. And so that's why we're here today. I'm Zach. I'm a loan officer at Black Diamond. We are starting February with the fundamentals of credit scoring. And this is the first in a four-week series that we're calling Fix Your Credit February. So if you or people that you know it's kind of awkward to say, hey, you need help with credit, right? But sometimes we learn if that's true or not. This would be an excellent few weeks to tune in as a real estate agent. Understanding how credit impacts your buyer's ability to purchase homes is particularly important. So I think that this uh, would be valuable for you to learn as well. Um, we're going to touch on a few things today, and then it's going to go further in depth uh, in future classes. But kind of our outline for the day, if you will, is we're going to go over the cost of poor credit. That's going to be important. Uh, we're going to look at three major categories of what we call the credit condition. We're going to understand how to accurately know your score. And then at the same time, we're going to look into um, what actually makes up the credit score. because that's an interesting piece of information that's important to know. Uh, we're going to look at what a creditor needs in order to loan someone who has made mistakes in the past. Uh, and we're going to look at some other technical stuff. And then of course, do some Q and A. Uh, I love questions from the audience. So if anybody has something, um, we've got quite a good crew here today. So if you guys have questions, feel free to uh, pipe in and I will get them answered for you. Okay. Let's start with a trivia question. The do trivia pay my bills on <laughs> question from the audience is, do I have to pay my bills on time? Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You do need to pay your bills on time. <laughs> Excellent question. Uh, we're going to start with a, another question from me to you, a trivia question. Who knows what FICO stands for? F I C O. You hear that term a lot. If you know anything about credit, what does FICO stand for? Anybody? Fair Isaac uh, one somebody in the audience said Fair Isaac something, and believe it or not, that's close. It's Fair Isaac Corporation. Um, that's not really important to the class, other than it's interesting that you, when you hear FICO, you just think credit score. You don't necessarily think Fair Isaac. So now you are smarter than you were a few moments ago. FICO is Fair Isaac Corporation. Okay, let's get into the first section here: the cost of poor credit. So <clears throat> sometimes costs are both tangible and intangible when it comes to credit score damage, if you will. But the one of the costs of poor credits could be just the fact that your purchase of a home would be delayed. If credit is poor enough, um, you might not be able to obtain mortgage financing and therefore would be in danger of, of missing out on potential equities. So it's kind of like an opportunity cost, if you will. Um, there's less opportunity for that home equity over time. And if you live in the Flathead Valley or if you've been here for just a few years, you know that home prices seemingly always go up. Sure, there are lulls here and there, uh, but buying a house is always better than not buying a house. So we don't want to let credit impact that for you. Um, poor credit often leads to higher interest rates. So let's say that you can buy a house, but your credit score is is not great. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that you don't get a loan, but it means that the loan that you do get is more expensive. And we believe that giving everyone a loan is the right thing to do. In addition to that, we want to give everyone the best possible terms. Uh, and some of that is kind of your responsibility as well on how you handle your own credit score. Uh, good credit provides you the opportunity to buy nicer homes, uh, nicer cars, basically just being able to have um, things that you might care about in your personal life. Uh, there that can be better than if you had poor credit. And part of the reason for that is that good credit equals a higher lending limit in most scenarios. So on the mortgage side of things, if you have good credit, um, the debt ratio is less important. It is important, but it's less important if you have good credit. Uh, and it's particularly constringent if you have poor credit. Oftentimes, Poor credit leads to higher fees, uh, higher payments to creditors. Uh, unfortunately, there are people that exist that that prey on poor credit borrowers, not necessarily in the mortgage space due to the regulation around who and how we can provide loans to, 
but you know, things like personal loans or car loans, um, you, you see skits online or, or videos that are intended to be funny, but also have a dark purpose, which is, you know, the, the car uh, salesman who's like, Ooh, we got a good one. They've got bad credit. We can get whatever financing terms we want. And while that's sickening, um, sadly it's true. So not having poor credit is a way to avoid that altogether. Um, there are what we would call three major categories of the credit condition. Uh, these are important as it relates to ability to obtain mortgage financing. The first one is you're unlendable. Um, basically, in that scenario, you are subject to predatory loans, hard money loans, if you can even get those. Um, and it's not a very fun world to live in. Unlendable for us would be anything typically below about a 500 credit score. Um, there are ways in which you can obtain certain loans above that. Um, but if you're below there, you'd be considered unlendable. We'll talk a little bit more this month about how to work on that because we don't want you to stay there for forever. Right now, we're just dealing with the facts that um, that's what that would create for you. The next category is weak or poor credit. Um we would say that that's essentially where you're lendable. You could obtain mortgage financing, but you'd be subject to less than desirable terms. So a good credit range to think of for this would be anywhere from that 500 mark that I mentioned to approximately 620, uh, 660, depending on the loan program that we look at. Um, can you get a loan? Yes. Is it going to be more expensive? Probably. The third category is good credit. That's what we would consider basically anything 680 plus. Um, of course, the scales are such that it's always better the higher that it is until you reach 780 on your FICO score. 780 is considered premier in the world of, of mortgages and finance where um, you're subject to the best pricing available. Um, so what do you do if you're in the unlendable category? The quick way to think about it is that you have to produce firewalls in your life. You have to set up um, a way out. Don't recommend doing this without talking to somebody, but maybe you need to consider a bankruptcy. Uh, maybe you need to consider some write-offs. Like, what do you do, right? That, that, don't go and make these decisions until you talk to an expert, because it's the worst thing you could do is just think that you know what you need to do. Um, but talk to somebody, and basically you need to then cut off that bad portion of however you handled credit and then make a plan for the future. If you're in the weak or poor credit category, it's the same principle. Maybe the uh, firewall that you create is less intense than say a bankruptcy because uh, we would never advocate for anyone to go through bankruptcy. Um, but if you have weak or poor credit, you probably need to firewall some of those uh, bad decisions that you made where you have items in collections or, you have just rolling lates on certain loans or credit cards. Um, similarly, you just need to cut that off and work forward toward the future so you can get in that good credit category. In all of this, just like every other class we teach, we want you guys to talk to somebody like us. We can help you. We see these things all the time. Uh, we can make excellent referrals to credit repair agencies if you need that. Um, don't do this alone because people who try to manage credit alone um, – you know, an analogy is like you're trying to sail a boat, but you don't know which direction the wind is coming from. And so more often than not, you're floundering <laughs> if you don't have the, the sail pointed in the right direction. So let somebody help you point that sail. Okay, let's spend a little bit of time on how you can know your credit score. Um, everyone in the United States is subject to a free annual credit report. It's surprising to me how few people know that. Um, but you should take advantage of it. You can go to annualcreditreport.com. And once a year, you can have your credit ran and you can take a look at it. You can do it online. You can actually do it by phone or mail even um, if you would like to do that. Uh, it's important to know your score. Another way you can find out your credit score, of course, would be to apply for a mortgage since that's a significant part of uh, the process of being approved. Um, we, and we see credit reports daily. So we'd be happy to help analyze things for you if you need it, but you need to know your score. You need to know where things sit. Um, quick story for me personally, I did a refinance transaction in 2022. 
or 21. It might've been 21. Um, and I had closed a credit card six months prior. Uh, but unfortunately the card was not actually closed on the creditor side. And I didn't know this until I went to do my, you know, so we went to do a refinance transaction and it popped up and I'm a 780 plus kind of guy. And so I saw a credit score in the low sevens and um, that irked me. Right. And so I needed to figure out what was going on and, the, and I figured it out and it was solvable and the, and the creditor fixed things. Um, but it was my fault that I didn't know my credit score when I went to get a refinance. And that is one thing I think everybody needs to know is that if you have bad credit without sounding rude, it's your fault. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really, really hard to deal with that in certain circumstances. Um, but if you don't know or, or, or something happened that you maybe was confusing, the truth is, is you have to go find out the information. Of course, there are circumstances where life happens and it's not your fault, but not knowing uh, is unfortunately not a good explanation for why maybe your credit score is where it is. So I had to take responsibility for the fact that I got a um, a less desirable interest rate on my refinance than I wanted to. I could have waited, um, but I didn't think that was the right thing to do. So the bottom line is make sure you know your credit score. Make sure you know what's going on with your credit score um, at all times, if you can, it's the, one of the most important components of finance in America. So definitely have your pulse on it. Something else that I'll say, as I was talking, I have a friend of mine who, um, worked very, very hard to obtain mortgage financing many, many years ago. And, uh, his experience is defined by going to the bank and having them year after year, tell him that he needed to make more money in order to buy a house. They were right. He needed to make more money in order to buy a house. So he did that. Year after year, he made more money. And finally, by the time he had made enough money to qualify, he came back to the bank and they said, well, you need to have a credit score too. And he was a big believer in cash and he had never had credit. And um, so he had to wait another year before he could buy his house because he didn't have his credit score in place. Um, so that was sort of on him too, is that he should have known and he should have had people in his life that helped him, right? Uh, explain that detail to him. But it's very important to know your credit score and kind of where things sit so you can be successful going forward. So how is a credit score measured? Um, it's measured in a couple of different ways. I'll give you the percentages and... Um, you can kind of just keep this in mind and then we'll talk about each one. So credit score is calculated on five categories. The first category, which is the most important, is payment history. 35% of your credit score depends on how you have made payments in the past. Are you on time? Are you late? Um, that is a factor. 30% of your credit score is based on the amount owed. Another term for this would be utilization. We hear, you sometimes hear that word when we talk about credit. So if you have a $10,000 credit limit and it's always throttled at $9,900, um, that's high utilization and that could negatively impact your credit score. That's why amounts owed is a big factor of the credit score. 15% of your credit score is based on length of credit history. So... Um, if you've used credit responsibly for many, many years, uh, it's likely that you'll have a higher credit score than if you use credit responsibly for, say, only a year or two. But notice it's 15%. It's not a huge factor, but it is a factor. 10% of your credit score is based on new credit inquiries. Um, so if you have your credit pulled frequently for various purposes, credit card, car, mortgage, et cetera, uh, there's a potential that could be damaging to your score, but notice again, that's only 10% of the total uh, calculation. And the last category is uh, also 10% of your score based on types of credit. So one of the things that we talk about with people frequently is that um, there are what is called, I mean, credit bureaus consider certain things to be good credit and certain things to be quote bad credit. 
uh, a mortgage is generally considered good credit as long as it's handled responsibly. Um, things like consumer debt or you know credit card debt, revolving debt that's uh, at a high utilization, that might be looked at more as a, a poorer form of debt. But again, only 10% of the total score. So it's not uh, a huge, important matter. So payment history and amounts owed account for 65% of your credit score. And if I'm being honest, those are usually the categories that we're talking to consumers about uh, if we're trying to help people improve their credit. Um, payment history is relatively self-explanatory. Pay your bills on time. That was the question from the audience that we had at the very beginning. You do have to pay your bills and you do have to pay them on time. One of the things I like to remind people about with credit, and it's hard because it's so easy to get access to um, in our society. But when you take out a credit card or a car loan or a mortgage, you sign paperwork that says, I agree to pay this back. And so if you don't view credit that way, your relationship with credit will be uh, rocky and probably not all that fun. But if you consider it a contract, something that you are responsible to pay back, um, that will help you better understand how to deal with credit and will ultimately end up producing better credit scores, better fees, better financing terms, et cetera. <clears throat> um, something that's important is that um, credit scores have nothing to do with your age, your race, your sex, your length of employment, your income, your education, your marital status. It's agnostic of all those things and, and doesn't necessarily care about uh, the personal details, which is a good thing because that basically means that you have full control over your own credit score. <laughs> now, I mentioned um, the gentleman who had no credit well, and he was told he just needed to make more income. I did want to make a statement, we'll, and we'll talk about this more uh, as the month of February goes on, but there are loan programs available for people that do not have credit. So one of the things that we will come across from time to time, um, most of you I'm sure know who Dave Ramsey is. Dave Ramsey uh, preaches no credit, save 20% for your down payment, et cetera. Um, that's okay. That's a principle that he believes is true. And I think it's a good principle unless there are certain factors in your life where that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to tell you a brief story about somebody else who I know and respect very um, deeply. They were a Dave Ramsey enthusiast. And they followed every instruction that he had uh, suggested. And what that looked like is they had excellent paying jobs. This married couple, um, they both work and they, they make uh, plenty of money to afford a house. They have been extremely responsible with their savings and they have uh, saved up more than 20% down. In fact, they could probably do 30% down for the type of house that they'd like to do, which is great. The one problem that we ran into, uh, or specifically that they were annoyed that they didn't know sooner, was that they knew they could get a loan with no credit, but they didn't necessarily understand how uh, the terms were maybe not what they wanted. Um, so we were working together and we looked at everything and we we could get them a loan at a zero credit score, but they actually made the conscious decision, uh, which makes sense if you consider how responsible they had been, to go out and build credit so that they could buy a house. And they actually delayed the, ho the home buying process until they were able to get a score um, in the 700 range so they could get the terms that they wanted. So I think it's important for everybody to know that zero credit loans exist, um, but they might not be in your best interest. Same principle as before, talk to a mortgage professional, talk to somebody at Black Diamond Mortgage. Um, we can help analyze whether or not um, that's a good decision for sure. Uh, so one of the things too is that with credit, you want to, uh, you rarely want to close out an account. Um, if you are paying down credit cards, One of the, if you're a member of the 10% being related to the length of credit history, um, you probably want to consider actually keeping that account open as long as it's had a healthy payment history. It's going to help you going forward. Um, and you just want to be careful with who's running your credit. This is something I wrote down that I will talk again more about later this month, most likely. But uh, there are certain 
what I would call loan sharks that exist that are looking for ways to uh, sell you things. And so they might be uh, creating a website that looks intriguing to where you can enter a few details. You've probably seen these. You can enter a few details and get approved for a loan right away. Just be careful. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, looking into those and see how it might help you, but be careful that they're not doing an inquiry on your credit because that does have the potential to hurt your score. Okay, so what a creditor needs in order to loan to someone who's made a mistake. So this is really important. I want you to remember three things. In fact, you probably should write them down. Let's say you've had something happen in your life that was in fact not your fault. I meant I was abrasive earlier when I said it is your fault. The truth is, is sometimes life happens and there are things outside of our control that, um, that have the potential to damage something like a credit score. The three main things that need to be talked about proficiently are number one, the problem has stopped. So whatever happened in the past is ended. The problem was not your fault or it was an isolated incident. And number three, the problem is not likely to continue. So this would be uh, kind of like climbing up into those categories. We have unlendable, weaker, poor credit, and good credit. Uh, we want to always be working toward that good credit, right? And so um, if you're in the category where you need to deal with these things, that's because you're moving on up. So let's think of an example. Um, one of the things that came to my mind is maybe you had a death in the family, and this is um, maybe tough to think about, but think of a husband and a wife. Perhaps the husband is the primary income earner for the family, and he unexpectedly passes away. All of a sudden, the spouse finds herself in a position where she's trying to care for the children, uh, put food on the table, and it's just not possible. And so that would be um, a good example of where you could isolate the incident as a, as a one-time credit challenge. Um, let's say she, in a few years, she was going to buy a house, right? We could get rid of a lot of that because of those three categories. Problem has stopped. Maybe she's found a job or, or um, things in her life have changed for the better. It wasn't her fault. You can't control when that stuff happens and it's not likely to continue. So I, I guess my point is, is I want to make sure that there's always hope <laughs> in some of these things because uh, those sorts of life traumas don't have to define the future. There is a way to make things better. And um, we're in the business of trying to help people with that. Another example I thought of is maybe you're self-employed and uh, you own a warehouse and your uh, a fire came through and totally destroyed your warehouse, all of your inventory, and your ability as a self-employed individual to produce income for your family has evaporated. And the rebuild timeline is, you know, two, three, four years before that income becomes viable again. It's possible that you could do the same thing. Uh, you could say the problem has stopped. Once you get back on your feet, it wasn't your fault, not likely to continue. So just keep those in mind. Um, like I said, we're big believers in, in making the future better, uh, regardless of how challenging the past has been. A um, couple of technical things that I'll get into Briefly, um, I'm going to give you some data, which I think is important if you are working with, especially on the realtor side, if you hear these buzzwords, um, you need to kind of know how to handle them. Um, the buzzwords I'm talking about are bankruptcy, foreclosure, and short sale. Those are what we would call major credit items that have happened in the past for a consumer. Um, sometimes people hear those words and they go, oh my gosh, right? There's it's never, you're never going to buy another house. Uh, and so the reason I wanted to give you the details on these is because that's not true. You can absolutely isolate the incident and, and figure out how to get somebody into a house. So um, bankruptcy, the waiting period from the time that the bankruptcy was discharged to the time that you can buy a new house varies anywhere from one to four years. And that depends on a couple different things. It depends on the loan program and it depends on the type of bankruptcy. There are multiple chapters of bankruptcy. Uh, the most common two are chapter seven and chapter 13. Um, chapter 13 is a little more lenient. And so through the FHA or VA or even USDA, um, you could potentially buy a house again within just one year of that event. 
So um, that hopefully helps dispel the myth that it's this never ending thing that's going to haunt somebody because that's not necessarily true. Also, there are loan programs in the non-QM sector. If you watched my class from a couple of weeks ago, we talked about non-QM financing. Uh, if you didn't watch it, you should. It's on asset-based lending. It's on YouTube. It's a good one to, to watch if you have the time. Um, but non-QM, because it doesn't follow agency guidelines, like uh, government or Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, um, there are loan programs that exist that have no waiting period at all for a bankruptcy. So meaning you could get back in the game um, the day after discharge. Foreclosure, uh, short sales treated very similarly to foreclosure. Waiting period here is anywhere from probably two to seven years, depending on the loan program. Um, the most lenient is VA. Another reason why we like VA loans is they're in the business of getting people back on their feet. Uh, waiting period there is only two years. Um, and you can actually get it all the way down to two years unconventional, believe it or not, if you have extenuating circumstances. And you could call us here and ask what those might be. Um, they're rather subjective, so it's hard to explain exactly what they might be. But again, same principle on the non-QM side. Uh, if you had a foreclosure and you're one day out from discharge, you could likely get a non-QM mortgage to be able to purchase a home uh, that very day. So just keep that in mind is there's um, credit is, is like a big web and you have to know how to navigate that web and avoid the spiders along the way. Um, something else, just two quick things and then I'll I'm, uh, open up for questions for you guys. One of the things that we'll probably talk about as well are disputes. Um, disputes are, are something that you probably should avoid unless you've been instructed to dispute an account by an expert. One of the things that we see sometimes in the mortgage space is uh, if you dispute a lot of items on your credit report, you might think that that's doing a good thing because you're basically telling all these creditors that they're wrong uh, about how they're reporting your information. However, um, sometimes a large number of disputes indicates volatility and volatility is sometimes scary for lenders. So I like whenever I hear people who are, you know, are interested in disputing something on their credit report, my caution is, Make sure you talk to somebody who knows how disputes work before you do that because you don't want to go backwards. We're always about going forward and we don't want to go backwards. And then the, uh, the last thing I was going to say is that credit depth um, matters for a lot of these things. So if you're dealing with bankruptcies, foreclosures, or anything crazy like that, um, we always want the good to outweigh the bad. And um, that's part of when you isolate an event you need to start building what we call credit depth. And what we want that depth to be is filled with positive um, credit occurrences and not negative. Credit's a lot, a lot uh, more often than not time-based. So if you have a long history of poor credit and a short history of good credit, you're on the right track, but at some point you want that good history to uh, actually be a longer period of time than the bad history. And that's all in the vein of we are always going upward. We're always trying to help people produce um, a lifestyle that is sustainable and enjoyable um, where you get excellent loan fees, excellent interest rates. Um, you Credit is an opportunity to make things better for you if you handle it correctly. So we want to help you with that. If you have any questions, um, feel free to call us. But if you have questions on the content from today, I've got a couple minutes I could field those for anybody if they have anything. What do you think of short sales? There's a question from the audience. What do I think of short sales? Um, that will be covered in a later class. Taught by Dave Boy, no. <laughs> who asked the question. No, short sales are interesting. They're, um, they, you need to talk to somebody before you decide what the right thing to do is, is honestly the best way to handle a short sale. It's, um, so it's more murky than it might appear, but it can be made clear once the whole story is known. That's how I'd answer that question. More to follow on short sales. So. <laughs> Any other questions from audience members? I was just wondering if Christina had a question. <laughs> this, 
<laughs> Does Christina have a question? <laughs> I do not. Thank you, though. <laughs> Did you know what FICO standed for? I do. It's nice. the, um, yeah. do you want me to say? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. It's the Fair Isaac Corporation. Nice. Somebody learned something today. That's my main objective whenever I teach a what, class. What's so. the worst thing you've ever seen on a loan application for credit card? The worst thing I've ever seen on a credit application, uh, mortgage application credit wise, would probably be rolling lates on a mortgage that has led to the mortgage servicer delivering a notice of default to a consumer, which basically means that foreclosure process is coming. That is, uh, when you see that, and you're trying to help somebody with a mortgage, everything needs to pause for a little bit <laughs> until we know more information. Yeah. That's probably the worst one I've seen. But try, either, try to call you before that. Happens. Yeah, try to call us before you get there. Exactly. Yeah, good. We because there might be a way to help. Um. Well, great. Hopefully, you learned something. It's a privilege for us to be able to bring education to you. So we will be back next week, Wednesday, 10 a.m. I'm not sure the specific topic. I didn't look that up, but it will be credit-based and you will want to see it. So I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, blessings from the team at Black Diamond Mortgage.